Next, I'd like to talk about another technique that you can use with a student called phonological awareness. The definition of phonological awareness is the sensitivity to and awareness of sounds of a language. People who don't perceive these sounds may have trouble with reading. This is the missing key for many and needs to come near the beginning of your instruction. There is a fellow named John Corcoran who's known as the teacher who couldn't read and the millionaire who couldn't read. He went all through college, he cheated his way through. He's not proud of the fact that he cheated, but he was very intelligent and he knew the material, but he could not take the tests and pass the courses. And he became a teacher. He actually was a very good teacher because he was very empathetic to students with problems. Um, later in life, he decided to try to remedy his reading problem, and he went to a literacy program in a library. And they used the Laubach method or something very similar to it. And he learned, but very slowly. And so eventually he went to a reading clinic that used phonological awareness. And it was the magic key for him. And after this type of instruction, he continued on and learned to read well. So we can uh, teach you this to use with your students if they're having trouble and just not getting it. A person that has a problem with phonological awareness may perceive one word as two, such as hearing the word energetic and thinking it's energetic or they may hear two words as one. They can only hear one blip of sound in the word pat instead of three p, at, one sound for each letter. There are five stages to developing sensitivity to sounds. Um, you'll see on the chart over here, the awareness that sounds are units in a sentence, understanding the concept of rhyming, Awareness that words can be divided into chunks or syllables. Awareness that syllables and words are made up of units of sound. And awareness that sound units correspond to written letters. We're going to work through these stages. Um, you have your student do multisensory exercises that help them to discriminate between sounds, imitate them, isolate them, and manipulate them. Assume nothing. Even if stage one seems so simple, uh, you should still make sure that your student can do it. Begin at the beginning. When your student can do the first phase well, then you move on to the next. Move from one phase to the next as soon as one is well mastered. Move from the simple to the complex, the known to the unknown. It is easier to break sentences into words than to break syllables into sounds. Short words are easier than long words. Use this for only short periods of time during each lesson, five to seven minutes. You may use this for as much as six months. A, a very learning disabled student in the school system with whom everyone, everything else had failed had this instruction for five minutes every school day and he mastered it all in eight weeks and moved up many grade levels, levels in reading. We're going to do some exercises in each of the five stages. I'd like you to do them along with me as you're, as you're watching the video. These exercises and more are also in your tutor information book, so you do not need to take notes during this presentation. The markers can be made from anything. They can be paper, they can be um, foam like we're using anything, but you need two different shapes and a lot of different colors, but you need some colors that are the same. Remember, we're only going to do small parts in all five stages very quickly as an example. You would work through one stage at a time completely, a little at a time over a period of months. Okay, first we're going to work on word awareness. And the first thing you would do is read a sentence to, the, to your student, have the student echo or repeat it to feel the sounds in the mouth, and then the student will move markers for each word as she says the word. 
Then she repeats the sentence, touching each marker as she says each word. Mary Pat, our first sentence is read to win. Read to win. Okay. Read to win. Read to win. Very good. All right, now we'll do a little harder sentence. Call Mary to the telephone. 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 Okay, and that sentence is much harder because we have multi-syllable words in it. And you have to be able to distinguish between it being a word and a syllable. All right, the next sentence that we'll do, uh, we'll move, we'll read a sentence, Mary Pat will echo, we'll move the markers and repeat the sentence just as we just did. But then I'll have her indicate specific things about the sentence by pointing to the correct marker and saying the word for it when I ask her a question. The sentence is, Climb aboard the train before it departs. 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 Very good. All right, which word tells what you get on? Um, this word, train. Right. Which one tells when? Um, climb aboard the train. This one, before. Right. And which word shows action? Well, two words maybe. Uh, climb and the last word, departs. Very good. Now we're going to manipulate words in a sentence by deleting adding and changing the words. Our sentence this time is Mary eats lunch today. Mary eats lunch today. Mary eats lunch today. Okay. Now change the sentence to show Mary eats lunch. Mary eats lunch. Okay, so you take away today. Mary eats lunch. All right, now change it to, to say Bill eats dinner tonight. Take away. Bill eats dinner tonight. So you take away Mary and replace Bill it with Bill. Eats take away lunch and dinner, dinner. And tonight. Bill eats dinner tonight. Very good. In reading sentences to the student, Make the words distinct. Don't talk too fast or run them together. If the student makes mistakes, repeat the sentence. And if you need to, you can demonstrate by moving the markers. Next, we'll move on to syllable awareness. You can teach the student to identify and feel syllables they hear in a word. You can clap, tap, touch your finger to your arm or the table. Tap with alternating hands. Put your elbow on the table um, and your chin on your hand to feel the chin drop. All right, let's try a, a couple of these. Workshop. Workshop. Okay. Table. Table. Or we could do table. Table. Um, or we can try this. Table. table. Your chin drops, so you can tell. All right. Next, um, I'm going to say a word and have Mary Pat echo the word, and then she'll move markers for the syllables, saying each syllable. Begin with one-syllable words and, and move up to multi-syllable words. Okay, the first word is cat. 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 Right. Okay. Next word is table. Table. 
Table. Very good. All right, the next word is radio. 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 Very good. All right, next I'm going to um, clap either giraffe or rhinoceros. Tell me which one it is. Giraffe. Right. And then you can use more than two words or ones that have uh, a closer number of syllables to make it a little bit harder. And then you can recite pairs of words and have the student echo and tell if they rhyme. And our first pair of words is bat, cat. Do they rhyme? Yes. Okay. How about follow and hollow? Yes. How about bat and bed? No. Right. Okay, and then you can ask the student to identify hidden syllables in the word and think in terms of sound rather than spelling. Is the word in is the word pop in popcorn? Yes. Is the word stick in lipstick? Yes. Is the word pen in dentist? No. Is the word few in nephew? Yes. Yes. It's not spelled the same, but the sound is there. Next, we're going to segment words. Say baseball without base. Ball. Say lipstick without lip. Stick. Now, uh, now that was leaving the first syllable off. That's the easiest. Now we'll try leaving the second syllable off. Say baseball without ball. Base. Okay. Now we'll try a three-syllable word. Say remember without re. Member. Right. Uh, say remember without burr. Remem. And now we're going to do the hardest one, leaving out the middle. Uh, say remember without mem. Re-burr. Good. Now we'll manipulate syllables by adding, omitting, substituting, and transposing them. Um, and this helps the student to recognize syllables as parts of words. They're also the same kinds of mistakes that students make. All right, Mary Pat, show me lip. 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 All right. Now make lipstick. Lip. Stick. Good. That was an addition. Now make stick. Stick. Right. That was an omission. Now make match stick. Match stick. Good. That was another addition. Now make match less. Match less. That was a substitution. Now make unless. Unless. Good. That was another substitution. Now make lesson. Lesson. Okay. Now think about that one again. Your, your beginning word was unless. The sounds, the syllables un, less. And now we're making less sun. So I should have transposed. Yes. Less sun. Okay. So that was a transposition. All right. Now we're going to work with sounds. And for this, you need markers of the same color as well as markers of different colors. Remember, the student always echoes before moving the markers. If this marker is b, show me b, b. B, b. Okay, good. If this marker is t, show me t, t. T, t. Okay, so being the same color shows that the sound is the same. Um, as soon as the student understands uh, that one marker for each sound, 
that you can move on to pairs of unlike sounds using different colors. So let me see t and k. T. Good. All right. Now we'll manipulate the sounds. Show me k at. Echo first. K at. Okay. K at. T k at. Good. Now change k at to m at. M at. M at. Good. Now change m at to m at. Good. Mm a g. Mm a g. Now change mm a g to mm i g. Mm i g. Mm i g. Very good. Now you can give the student real words and have them indicate the number of sounds that they hear. This can be done either orally or with markers. And um, we'll do this orally. Ray Pat, how many sounds do you hear in cat? K at three. Right. How many sounds do you hear in lock? Lock. L a k lock. Th three. Good. OK. Also, uh, say cat without k. At. Right. And say hill without <sighs> ill. Good. OK. Then you can practice blending sounds into words like we did in the last half of skill book one. Say the sounds slowly and have the students blend them together. Start with two or three word, sound words and gradually use longer words. I'm going to give you a couple sounds and blend them into a word. A at, at, at. Good. S, a, n. S, a, n. Sun, sun. Right. Okay, after the student is proficient at blending, you can compare the number of sounds heard with the number of letters seen. Um, and you can do that also by writing them on a piece of paper or on the board. It can be uh, both oral and visual. OK, next uh, give the student a pair of words or later sets of three or more words and have them echo and tell what sounds the words begin with. This is similar to the skills practice that we began in book one. First you uh, do the beginning sounds, then the ending sounds, and then the middle sounds. What sound do boy and bug begin with? B. What sound do child and chase begin with? Ch. What sound do bed and nod end with? D. What's the vowel sound, the middle sound, in fun and sun? Uh. How about the middle sound in cob and hot? Ah. Uh. Very good. OK, we're going to jump ahead to the very last stage in the building of, of words. And we're going to start with a simple two-syllable word and show you how, the, uh, how this would all end up. The word is dentist. Dentist. All right. And so she, now I want her to orally break dentist into syllables. Dentist. Good. And then move markers for the syllables. And use your round ones for the syllables. Dentist. Very Dentist. good. Dentist. Very good. Now, move one of your markers, your square markers, for each sound in each of those syllables. Den. D. E. Mm. D -e -m. Okay, do the rest of the word. Test. T. E. S. T. 
Oh, okay. Est. Okay. And now we're going to attach the spelling to these sounds. So as you say each sound, give it its its letter. D. D. A. E. N. N. T. T. E. I. S -t, T. Very good. And you can do this on paper or you can have cut out letters in your little phonological awareness kit along with the markers. There are a number of ways that you can uh, work with adding these letters. Now let's do one more harder word. Okay, your new word is sunshine. Sunshine. Very good. Okay, move your markers for the syllables. Sunshine. And, sunshine. And now let's do the individual sounds. Uh. Mm. Uh. Mm. Okay. I mm. Okay. Uh, mm. Very good. Okay, and now we're going to give the letters to these sounds. S U N N S H Mm -hmm. I, I, mm, N. Okay, now we have one more letter there. The E, this was a long I in sunshine. That's right. And so we need the long E to make, or we need the E, the silent E, to make that I long. And there's a little trick to this. Count back three, and if this is a vowel, when a word, when a word or syllable ends in E, Count back three, and if it's a vowel, then that vowel will be long, will have its long sound.